Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Informatica World here at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host and analyst, Rob Strecce. Gen AI, word of the day. Uh, absolutely, and I, I think making it real and governed and bringing policy to it really is a big piece of that where how do you do it and how do you get moving with it all the customers are here talking about it, and I am so excited to continue that conversation. To get their data ready for yes. it, exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, with that, I'd like to welcome our next two guests to the show. We have Mo Mirza, he is the Director, Enterprise Data Software and, and, and Integrations Engineering at Omers. Welcome, Mo. Thank you. And Sumit Agrawal, VP of Product Management at Informatica. Thank Very you so much. Very excited to be here. Yes, and great job on the keynote this Thank morning. You. It was, Thank it was you. a brilliant presentation. Uh, Mo, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about OMERS, what you're all about? Sure, absolutely. Um, at OMERS, we're a defined benefit pension plan uh, covering some of the most important people in the province of Ontario. We have 620,000 plan members covering city workers and uh, police and fire and emergency medical services workers. Um, we're uh, an organization that is contributing to our uh, Ontario GDP and so one in every 11 households in Ontario depends on an income from, from OMERS. So I'm imagining you have a lot, of, a lot of data that you're dealing with and a lot of data challenges. Yeah, uh, we've got, um, uh, we're, we're also one of Canada's largest institutional investors. And so we have a lot of data that is really operational and you know, my purview is really around the operational data and the platforms that we run at, at, uh, at OMERS. Um, I, you know, I think it's important to also understand that for, for how we run our engineering teams and our platform engineering, we work very closely with uh, many of our data scientists as well as our uh, artificial intelligence uh, experts in our, in our COE. And so we work as a service provider back to them. Yeah, and I, I think again, it's especially where you have such a public interest in your, in your corporation and you're doing investments and things, it's, it's pretty critical like you said, not only to the economy, but to those people. And now, you know, being able to be customer focused and help them out, I'm sure there's a lot that is going on with that data, but there's also the Gen AI component to this and how Gen AI is injecting itself into that. How, how do you see that playing out with what you're dealing with? So from, a, from an engineering perspective, you know, there, there are no shortcuts around this, right? And so, for us, we look at Gen AI as, um, uh, we're not the experts in Gen AI, like, so, but we look at it as an embedded component of a, a data pipeline or another integration uh, tool in our, in our toolkit um, and, or, or a feature within an application. Like, people want to box it in, in, a, in one way or another, but we kind of look at it as all of those. And so, for us, the strategy around, uh, the, you know, the deployment of that, uh, working with the experts around um, you know, our AI COE is doing it at scale using an integration platform is really kind of an important part of it. You know, I said there's no shortcuts around this and so one of the things that um, uh, we're proud to say is that our, our organization with the experts that are in the AI COE uh, put a trusted data, uh, trusted AI guidelines together. And that gave us the green light for, on the engineering side, to be start to building those solutions uh, so that we can take them to market. So Sumit, I want to bring you in here. How do you work with OMERS and in terms of the use cases that, that Mo is talking about? How, how, do, how do you partner with? No, absolutely. So first of all, thanks Mo for joining us at Informatica World. And actually Mo spoke about his use case uh, yesterday in our market prospective session. And um, I've been associated with uh, OMERS from a few months and they're doing some very exciting things. And, um, and they have been a long-standing customers for our IDMC and especially um, they're using our API and app integration product lines. So, I mean, my role here is uh, to support uh, OMERS for their use cases. There are a lot of interaction between, between us, and, um, and when I heard about um, Mo's vision of making their chatbot more Gen AI, and, and he shared how he's using our product lines to do that, uh, that was simply very exciting. So, maybe Mo, if you want to share how you got our integration users who are using our CAI, how you got them converted into Gen AI? Yeah, I, again, as I said, there's, there's really, um, uh, from an integration engineering perspective, 
another tool in the toolkit for us. So I think there is a level of intimidation that's there with respect to the hype. I think we're seeing users of these technologies uh, get that immediate gratification with that interactive experience for getting insights out of the data that, um, that they're using. I, the approach we took around that is, again, we have a grounding on the integration platform, right? And the integration platform provides us uh, application integration capabilities. The Gen AI services that we're seeing there being offered are really no different than any other SaaS offering that's out there. And so it fits in nicely when we're doing a solution to be able to do that. So when we're doing the development, you know, one of the first things we look at is, is this an, does it fit our integration pattern, right? And so then, if you've got an integration platform um, and you've got the, you know, the, the quick start uh, uh, items that are needed to be able to do that, you know, a trusted AI guideline being a one, one important part of that, then the engineering team has an ability to be able to do that. I think, you know, Sumit, the partnership we've had with Informatica mm -hmm. has been fantastic. I mean, going and working directly with the product team, providing them the feedback that we need to be able to support the the use cases that are coming through. We've got a lot of excitement on our business side. We've got some fantastically smart people in our data and technology space who are coming to us with suggestions around what, how we can deploy this or what needs to be deployed. Our engineering team is working really hard to be able to deploy it and scale and, and integration is part of that. And I, I would imagine that, it, again, it's using different parts of the Informatica toolkit to actually get to a trusted AI platform because, again, it goes back to you're dealing with financial data, a lot of PII, there's a lot of regulations in Canada, uh, similar to GDPR and things of that nature. How, how are you using the different parts of Informatica toolkit to actually affect that? So, as I said, we've, we're looking at the uh, cloud application integration capability, right? And so, if I can speak directly to a kind of our use case around that, uh, you know, one of the challenges we saw is that with the rapid adoption of the public chat um, uh, applications, uh, we wanted to be able to, in, you know, working with the business and you know, the experts within our data and technology team, enable the rest of our organization to be able to use those tools and take advantage of it. Um, what we did is we created, uh, the software engineering team developed an application working with the business to, to enable that same sort of chat experience but on our internal cloud, on our private cloud. That helps protect our data, it helps to uh, incentivize good uh, data, gov uh, data uh, practices around leakage as well as what's sharing and going outside of our bounds of there. Where the platform comes in, the integration platform comes into play is to be able to now decouple what is any one sort of chat, uh, uh, chats, uh, you know, API that, that's being used in the back end. Um, and so for us, when we deploy so, uh, an application like that, um, we feel comfortable that if there is a request for us to scale that out for a line of business, add in greater logic in there, uh, or if we need to change, you know, if something happens in the market and an uh, and, uh, LLM provider is now perhaps falling out of disfavor, or, or, or we need to actually add, augment that with another LLM service provider, it's a matter of using a service connector and changing the LLM in the back end, and the user experience still remains the same. Yeah, so I, I want to amplify what uh, Mo just said, right? So one of the things we, uh, we actually announced at Informatica World, uh, this conference is our no-code Gen AI app, and Omers is one of our great users for that. What, what Mo just described is that we actually provide a universal connectivity which is super easy for any users to just come in and build any LLM connector. So he's talked about service connector, that's one of the way for you to bring any LLM connector, and, and that's what they have done where they have just used uh, API from the LLM connect, uh, from LLMs, and they were able to build that connector, and they were able to orchestrate that in their existing business process, and they were able to get that with their own integration developers, and, and they were able to do Gen AI. So this is a classic example of how an integration developers can be a Gen AI developers. Yeah, I, I, I go back to the keynote, great demonstration, so if you haven't seen it, Again, I would go back and watch it when it's up on the mm -hmm. website because it showed how you could do that. It went through, okay, here's how you connect to the vector database. Exactly. Here's how you bring in the LLM. And to your point, I, I think, you know, maybe I want to use Llama 3 now that it's out or I want to go use ChatGPT and 4.0 or whatever, whatever that new 
one is, I mean, <laughs> things like that, and how I can, in doing testing and stuff. Has that been a big piece of it as well as going through and, and iterating through? Yeah. I would have to say that this has to help with that part of it. It's a very fast moving space right now, right? And, and it's like almost on a daily basis, you'll see either an open source model changing or, or a new service provider. I think we heard some staggering statistics around how many thousands of new startups there are around, around uh, these services. Um, for us, what was important, again, from an engineering perspective is, we want to be able to respond um, as quickly as we can to the business requests that are out there. We're by no means you know, experts in, in LLM services. I, I don't necessarily know what the fit for purpose is based on the problem solution space for an LLM, but our data science and AI folks do, right? Or business uh, leaders might have some opinion on that. What they're looking from the engineering team is, can you get this integration up and running for us quickly, right? And so for us to be able to scale this out, um, we want to be able to take an approach of, we've already invested in platforms, we've already invested in technology, how do we get the most out of it for being able to meet the objectives with these new technologies that are coming out? So up on the main stage this morning, Sumit, you, you did lay, lay out before the audience the, mm -hmm. the product roadmap, and yep. so I'm curious to hear how you are working with OMERS to determine the next, the, their roadmap yeah. for their Gen AI initiative. Absolutely, so in fact, um, I want to uh, lay out the scenario what uh, Mo have just mentioned, that he has taken an integration users who have known how to build Informatica mappings, now the same users are now doing Gen AI development just by a few clicks. Now the next thing is how we can make this enterprise class. Now there are a lot of there are data science tools out there, a lot of LLM companies out there, but and people use to use these LLM companies as a science tool. Now where what Informatica is so unique is we are how we are making it enterprise class. And there are a lot of investment in our roadmap also which are happening on our, in this area, which is including API management, building more uh, APIs, uh, recipes and all. And maybe more you want to share how you made this whole process enterprise class uh, at Omers, because that was one of your key bent thing where your, uh, what I heard from you b before was that you don't want to take any any product which is not enterprise class. So tell me more about like how you were how you use Informatica to make it enterprise class. The whole Gen AI apps. I think again going back to kind of the integration platform um, strategy, right? Like I think you know to paraphrase Mike Tyson, like everybody's got an AI plan until you crunch the data, yeah. right? So <laughs> uh, what we saw. Paraphrase. Yeah, I paraphrase. <laughs> so so. You, for us, the strategy around AI is sort of evolving, right? And I think, um, to Samit's point, what, we're, what we started developing with our integration, you know, our, our integration muscle was connecting SaaS applications together to be able to uh, operationalize the business and create interoperability, right? And I think for us, where Informatica's platform has sort of factored into our strategic advantage is around that scalability for um, for the organization around the Gen AI applications that might be. So that might be you know, Gen AI within a data pipeline, it might, so that we can maybe enrich the data, or you know, Gen AI within uh, an interactive, you know, human in the loop sort of uh, uh, application. Uh, and we can orchestrate that between one or more uh, LLMs as we go, go along. I think that obviously the sky's the limit in terms of the number of use cases that we're, we're seeing in, um, from an engineering team perspective, we want to be able to provide uh, a, a service around not only the development of the application, but where the, those Gen AI services can be available. Working closely with our data science and AI teams members who are experts in that area around fit for purpose, we're able to now deploy things that we probably wouldn't be able to deploy otherwise. Yeah, I, I think that to me is really one of the critical things is that you, the fit for purpose and looking at that and being able to iterate so quickly. So any, any parting thoughts or recommendations to people as they kind of go down this path? Like you said, not an expert in it, but you, you're, you may be further down the path because 80% uh, of organizations that we, we have some polling data in are still in the actual figure it out and not production stage. And they're trying to get to where you guys are even with a limited use case mm -hmm. that they have, some of these other organizations, as they grow and understand the fit for purpose. I think integration and your data platform are a key component to that. But it doesn't mean that you have to like solve for all the problems, right? Like there's 
uh, even on a limited basis if you've identified those key capabilities around application integration, so SaaS to SaaS, you know, your data platform, hosting the data and having it cleansed and ready for use. Um, even a limited, a limited use case is going to help you break that boundary that you think is insurmountable right now, um, working again closely with you know, I look at data governance as more of an enablement function, so working through that enablement. That's really, I think, those the key items to be able to get through, to break through to the next um, step. Gen AI, again, is, is being, it can be intimidating, but it's really n nothing more than another tool in our toolkit around how we, uh, how we process our data, right? And I think that's, that's we need to approach it from that perspective. Um, if you've got an integration engineering team, I mean, I'm fortunate to have fantastic people working in an integration engineering team. That really is one of the key, uh, uh, key ingredients for, for quick deployment and success. Don't be scared. I don't like that. Scared. Great don't advice. Be scared, <laughs> Great <yeah>. advice. <laughs> and have a good partner as well. <laughs> yes. 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 Indeed, indeed. Yeah. Mo and Sumit, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE. A really Thank great you. conversation. Thank Pleasure so being here. Thank Thanks. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Stretche. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Informatica World. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.